Hi there everyone, my name is Zach and welcome to my channel. Amongst other things, I'm a reenactor and a jouster and today I want to talk to you about knights and ponies. Now, if you, um, if you follow YouTube and Facebook uh, discussion, then you've probably been introduced to an interesting study recently about uh, um, the height of horses uh, throughout the medieval period. Um, there was a study done recently, and I'll put a link to it in the um, description down below, which measured the heights of lots of different horse skeletons and uh, compiled them. It was great. I really enjoyed uh, reading it. I, <laughs> I love statistics. Um, that's probably not something I should, uh, I should admit to. But this is the internet, and um, everyone's weird on the internet, so that's okay. Uh, I love statistics, and uh, I loved seeing this. And it was great for me because it actually confirmed a lot of the things that I've previously been saying about the size of uh, medieval horses. Now, unfortunately, uh, some people found this study, and it seems that they read... Uh, a very small section of it, didn't understand most of it, and then wrote some clickbait articles saying that knights were riding around on ponies all the time and uh, did some very bad Photoshop uh, to demonstrate what that would look like. Um, this in turn got some people upset because obviously uh, what was being said in the study was not what was being said in the articles. Um, and it kind of you know it sparked a few videos so I thought I'd throw my hat into the ring and uh, um, just kind of try and add some education to the topic because I think um, some people um, especially the people writing the original articles are kind of not really quite understanding some of the uh, the nuances of it okay so first of all and uh, um, this is really important is that the original study uh, is not saying that knights rode the horses that they found, okay? One of the very important things that you need to understand when studying anything in history is the things that we have may not be representative of, um, of what they had back then, okay? We've got a certain number of horse skeletons, but the number of horses uh, that lived throughout the medieval period was far in excess of what we have. The larger the, the study, the greater the chance that what we have would be representative, but also you cannot tell exactly what those horses were used for, okay? And all of that was laid out in the original study. So the people writing the articles and saying knights rode these horses uh, obviously didn't read the whole study. That is not necessarily the case. However, the study does show some interesting trends which do seem to back up what a lot of us um, have been saying about the size of medieval war horses. Um, now, before we get into this, um, there's a few things that we need to go through. You see, um, you may be surprised to hear this, but horse people uh, have invented an entirely new measuring system which only they use and uh, it's all very confusing. Horses are not, um, or you know, in England at least, are generally not measured in standard units um, that most people would use, like centimetres or, or, um, or feet. Horses are measured in hands, okay? And a hand is four inches. And any horse below 15 hands counts as a pony, uh, in modern terms anyway, all right? Uh, th now, this isn't 100% true. Some people say that ponies are anything under 14 hands and 2 inches. But, uh, um, you know, there's debate. If you get any two equestrians in a room, then you are bound to have at least three of them disagreeing. OK, so um, so we've got horses. Horses are, you know, everything. Pony is anything under 15 hands. Right. Now, that's five foot tall. But another thing that you need to remember, because, you know, 
this is uh, equestrianism and we do things weirdly over here, uh, is that we don't actually measure to the top of the horse's head as you would with a human, but we measure to the top of the horse's withers. That is the shoulder uh, of the horse. I'll put a picture up. Um, so that um, five foot measurement is measured to the top of the shoulder, not to the top of the head. Okay. Um, now, I think where a lot of people have got confused with this, a lot of the people who maybe um, wrote the original articles, is that pony can also mean a, that certain breeds of horses that don't get over a certain height are also called ponies. Okay, um, And the example that you often saw photoshopped into their, um, into their articles was the Shetland pony, which is a particular breed of pony, which is a miniature miniature breed and it comes from the Shetland Isles. Um, they have a maximum height of 11 hands, so um, 44 inches at the shoulder. Um, and you know, they're, they're basically one of the smallest breeds of horse that you can find. Now, the, uh, uh, the problem with these photoshops and things is that there were actually only um, very small, I think it was only two examples of horses small enough that they could be shell and ponies in the entire study and it was much much uh, it was a very big study so um, photoshopping those um, those pictures is um, while you know some people might consider it to be funny it is incredibly misleading um, these these tiny horses are not what we're seeing either okay so what you're seeing is lots of horses that are smaller than the average riding horse nowadays um, and that nowadays would be classified as a pony. Now not all of the horses in the study were that small and particularly when in the periods where you start seeing um, heavier armour such as, um, well I think it's classified as the late medieval period where you would have man and horse armoured in plate, um, you actually do see some bigger horses even reaching 16 hands okay if you have a look at the paintings of the time you see horses of various different sizes now um, you might have seen Metatron's video on this and he brings out this photo of a, a painting of a, a very big horse okay but there are also plenty of other images of much smaller horses now you could say that this is artistic license of um, of medieval people showing you know knights riding smaller horses and, and the horses are smaller because the knights are more important. But if that is the case, if you're saying that this is artistic license, then you cannot use other artistic evidence um, for the size of your horses, okay? Because that might be artistic license as well, okay? Maybe um, the the horse is extra big in this painting because the owner and the commissioner really liked his horse okay so uh, we see a range of sizes now a lot of Metatron's um, quotes as well um, do discuss the size of a horse and they say that you should use larger horses or, or medium horses or you know that kind of description but very rarely does it ever actually um, give any sizes what we do have is a um, a life-size drawing of a horse um, on a wall and I'll put the picture up here and this horse is at 15 hands okay so you're looking that horse is only slightly is only an inch taller than what would be classified as a pony and this is definitely a war horse okay that's 60 inches tall at the withers now for most um, most men of battlefield age that would mean that the horse is standing roughly at their shoulder height um, possibly uh, kind of armpit height depending on height of the person and that is very consistent with a lot of the late 15th century artwork that we see and I'm going to put some of these up here now now one of the problems with gauging the size of a medieval war horse which you don't have when gauging the size of a medieval man is that the armour designed for a war horse um, is very different to the armour designed for a man. Okay, It is split in certain places 
um, which means that you can't necessarily get an idea of the full length of the horse. Um, and also it very rarely armors the legs. And to my knowledge, we don't actually have any, um, any remaining examples of leg armor for the horse. There are images of it, um, but to my knowledge, we don't have any left. Now, if you know of any, then please do let me know because I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to see some original examples. Anyway, so what this does is this causes a problem in gauging the length of the horse, and it also uh, gauges a problem with the height of the horse. Okay, because um, obviously um, the gap in the middle where you would put your saddle and where the rider's leg goes could be varying in size, and the uh, the height of the horse is. Uh, is caused a lot by the uh, the length of the legs. Now you might be able to, you know, do some studies and and get some averages going, but this is again tricky because um, uh, because different horses can be very different depending on breed and depending on uh, on gender and whether they are gelded or not. Okay, so a a very you can get really quite bulky but short horses, if they have been trained well, if they've bulked up, uh, and if they are stallions, they can gain even more um, more weight and muscle, okay? So the actual size and, and breadth of the armor ca can help, but it's not always 100% uh, useful. Another issue that you have is a lot of these bards um, are actually designed to, that you can use them on multiple horses, okay? So they are adjustable, uh, because you know your um, your top horse might actually only be useful for you um, for you know four, four to ten years, and you might not want to replace your bard every single time. Also, knights were expected to bring multiple horses uh, on campaign with them, and these horses um, would be expected to fulfil different roles, such as the destriat, which is the heavy cavalry horse and would wear almost full bard. Uh, or the lighter cavalry horse, the courser, which might wear half barred or even um, hardly any armor at all. Okay, so these armors were expected to be um, uh, able to be modified and used on multiple different horses. Uh, so using a bard to to gauge the size of a horse can be tricky in in those respects. So the the study, I I just think the study is really really great when i first saw it come out i felt that this was good this was some statistical evidence that backs up the art uh, that backs up what we've been saying about you know horses not needing to be shire horses by the way shire horses didn't even exist in the medieval period that breed came much later okay um and so you know it busts that misconception of the uh, the medieval war horse being the shire horse Unfortunately, some people, um, you know, the original article writers who didn't really understand what a pony actually is and how a horse is actually measured, have then taken this and in order to get clicks, have gone with the sensational idea of knights riding ponies without actually understanding what a pony is and what that actually means, okay? So, um, absolutely love the... Um, the study I would love to see more on this so if you're one of the people who are uh, doing the original study thank you so much this is great this backs up what we've been saying for a long time in the jousting community uh, you know if you came to this because you found one of the original articles uh, which I haven't linked here because I, I don't think we need to give them any more views um, please you know this they don't understand what they're talking about a pony uh, is a much wider definition than uh, than what their clickbait um, articles are suggesting. All right, um, thank you very much for watching this. Hopefully this has given some extra information for you um, and helped you to um, understand the study and, um, and given you a better idea of how that fits into the rest of our, um, our knowledge of medieval war horses. Um, if you enjoyed this, please do like, share and subscribe. Um, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Bye-bye.